mode. Um, Katie's diagnosis happened when she was 19 and it happened from several missed diagnoses from um, severe illness, fatigue, vomiting, going to hospitals, being sent home with no diagnosis. Um, finally she went into full adrenal crisis and we got a phone call while she was in college um, up in San Francisco telling us to hurry that she wouldn't make it through the night, but they did not know what was wrong. Um, so ever since we've been in crisis mode trying to manage a very rare disease called Addison's disease. Addison's disease is when the adrenal glands, which are two very, very small glands that sit atop of the kidneys, um, when they just stop producing cortisol. And cortisol is your adrenaline, but you know that's not just for for uh, roller coaster rides. You need it to remain alive. It is a life-sustaining hormone, and it is responsible for maintaining your electrolyte levels, your uh, sodium, potassium, um, managing the heart rate, uh, blood pressure, um, many other functions. Um, I think your heart being the most important. And for most Addison's patients who don't survive, it usually is always through cardiac arrest. So Katie, Katie was on her high school surf team and um, she was very active, sort of a type A personality, self-made um, academically and um, always, you know, strive to do everything. She even took summer classes that were college level classes. She was just always going, going, going. Um, but surfing seemed to really keep her healthy and active. And there's a theory that um, because Addison's patients deplete their salt and sodium because Addison's patients need extra sodium and she may have been absorbing it through her skin while surfing in the water every single day. And even now, her doctors think that may have saved her, her life all through high school. And when she left for college, she went to San Francisco, and no more surfing, no more sunshine, and we think that her body just collapsed. That's when she went into full crisis mode and ended up being rushed to the ER, was in ICU, and we got a phone call that she probably wouldn't make it through the night. My husband was in Vegas for um, a business, show and he drove nonstop for 12 hours till he got there um, and I caught the first flight up and it was the worst flight of my life because we didn't know if she was going to live and um, it took five days before um, she was in a near coma state and it took five days um, before an endocrinologist finally came in and recognized the skin discolor uh, discoloring and um, he said I think I know what it is and um, he gave her hydrocortisone and she just came back to life and um, we left you know, several days later and brought her home to Orange County thinking okay we can manage this and I think at that time I had started my chemotherapy and she knew I wasn't well and she just wanted to manage on her own and she went to sleep which is now something else we know you never let an Addison's patient go to sleep when they're not well we heard a loud crash at 6.39 a.m. She was living at home, and um, we heard the, the crash. And my husband and I both jumped out of bed and ran to her room, and she had died. She had tried to get up to go to the bathroom, and she stumbled, and she was, she was not breathing. And my husband was trying to do CPR, and um, she, um, she died. And she, she had died for 35 minutes by the time she got to Hoke. The, the EMTs just pretty much took her in as a DOA. 
there was no there was no further attempt to resuscitate her after they used the paddles so she didn't have a pulse. And I always worry that can happen again. I was terrified to bring her home from the hospital for the whole year that she was in subacute care and I was terrified to leave her there because I was afraid they wouldn't manage her Addison's either. So you have to deal with a lot of fear. <laughs> to have this community genuinely embrace us. I'm telling you, it has kept our family afloat. It has literally kept us alive, all of us. From the beginning with the surf event to, um, to even this Art for Katie event, it's provided opportunity for Katie to be active in her community. When we went to Dave Reynolds' shop, um, it was surprising. I honestly didn't know that so many people would be there. It was so fun to see Bobby and Diana and Don and Matt and of course Dave and of course Katie loved getting to see the dog too but the art experience was was wonderful because I got to see improvement in Katie's dexterity, her ability to hold that pin and to create with me was a really special moment. Katie's showing improvement every week. Will she need care for the rest of her life? Yes, unfortunately, yes. But is she showing remarkable improvement all the time? Yes, and you know why? Because our friends provide that for us, our community. Um, I am stage four, we don't know what my future is, and now it's important to me to know that Katie is cared for. And when people in the community come up to me and they say, let us help, let us be uncle so-and-so or auntie so-and-so, and let us be there, don't ever feel alone, I think that's taken a huge load off of my worry level. <sighs> One day at a time, I think the only way I can deal with it is knowing that I'm lining things up to make sure Katie is cared for and um, training everyone really well and making lots of new friends in our community so that I know my husband has someone to call on, not just our core group of friends, but he'll have an expanded group of friends. And that has just brought me relief because I'm still in a big battle and I'm daily, daily fighting that. I don't wanna leave Katie alone with just one dad, you know? And now I know she has a whole community. Please try to absorb what we've learned, and that's um, just don't ever stop loving each other. Don't ever stop loving every minute of your day, of your life. You find me over the rainbow. It's so pretty. I like the colors. Dreams that you did to 